The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture, that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. I like, pe- I like to see people dressed up. It looks, it's nice to see you dressed up for Mass. You should do it more than once or twice a year. Thank you for being here. So do you believe in the resurrection? Yes. yes. And so do you, do you believe that we too will be resurrected? Yes. Right? We say that at the end of the creed, right? We, I believe in the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. So Jesus, through his resurrection, has given us a share in his own resurrection, access to heaven. And it's God who raised Jesus from the dead and raised him through the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus was raised from the dead. Every time there is life, every time there is creation, uh, a renewal, a recreation, there involves the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, the word for spirit in Hebrew is ruah, which means spirit, but it also means breath, and it also means wind. So when you think of breath, what do you think of? Life, right? Life. Remember when God made Adam from the clay? And what did he do to him in order to give him life? He breathed into him. That's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the breath of God that gives Adam life. And the Holy Spirit gives us supernatural life, eternal life with God. And the Holy Spirit accomplishes that, not just in the next life, but he starts in this life. It all starts now and we work our way to heaven. It's not, it's not like you just die and go to heaven. No, you, there's a whole process of transformation in which the Holy Spirit works in us to accomplish this resurrection. And it's through the theological virtues. Theological virtues. Who can tell me what the theological virtues are? Can you give me one? Faith. Two. Hope. Three, love or charity, right? So faith, hope, and love, theological virtue. So what does it mean to say it's a theological virtue? What is theology? The study of God, right? So these virtues come from God. They're infused in us, and they conform us to God and lead us to God. So that's why they're called the theological virtues. So they lead us to heaven. They conform us to Christ. They prepare us for eternal life. They perfect us. So these are the ways in which the Holy Spirit helps us to, towards, to accomplish the resurrection, to, to resurrected life. And I, 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 I see these three theological virtues in today's readings. So we hear that St. John saying that he got to the tomb. He looked inside the tomb and he just saw the cloths. One was a burial cloth, 
and the other was the cloth uh, that covered the head, rolled up in a separate place. That's all he saw. He doesn't know what happened to the body. Mary Magdalene thought somebody took the body of Jesus. But what did St. John say, say that when he saw that? What happened to him? He believed. That's faith. So already the Holy Spirit is enlightening John, right? He doesn't know what happened to the body. He just sees the cloth, but he believes. He believes that Jesus has resurrected, that he is raised from the dead. So that's faith. So the Holy Spirit is already working in St. John to help him to grow in faith. That's the first step. And that's really essential for us to believe in order to be resurrected. I'm so happy you all answered that you believe in the resurrection. And you also believe that you, you share in that resurrection. Now we, we need to grow in faith. So that's the resurrection. But let's fast forward to today, 2,000 years later. Do we believe that Jesus is with us? Do we, how, how is Jesus with us? The Eucharist. Do you believe, do all of you believe that Jesus is with us in the Eucharist? Do you believe in the real presence of the Blessed Sacrament? That's good, that's faith, that's important. So with that faith comes practice, right? If we really believe that Jesus is in the Blessed Sacrament, in the Tabernacle, in the Eucharist, do you think we should come, how often do you think we should come to Mass? Right? Every day is what I'm hearing. How many of you go to Mass every day? Don't, don't, you don't have, <laughs> you don't have to answer that. I don't want to put you on the spot, right? But I see a lot of people this weekend that I don't normally see. Right? And I probably won't see you again until Christmas. <laughs> I mean, I'm glad you're here twice a year. But if you really believe that Jesus is truly present in the Eucharist, do you think you would come more than twice a year? Yes. Just something for you to think about. Right? How is your faith? And are you living out your faith? It has to be demonstrated by your action, your choices, your life. Am I right? So think about that. If you really believe that Jesus is truly present in the Eucharist, you'd want to be with him. You know, during Good Friday or Holy Thursday, leading up to Good Friday, we had overnight adoration in the hall. And I went there at 3 a.m. and I saw people there, five to 12 people there. And other people were coming there in the middle of the night. Do you think they believe that Jesus is present there? Yes. Why else would you wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning to be with Jesus, to be in the presence of the Blessed Sacrament if you did not believe? Right? People were coming and going at all hours of the night. That demonstrates their faith. So that's faith, and we need to grow in that. And the Holy Spirit helps us to grow in that. And the Holy Spirit, when he appeared to the disciples at Pentecost, he appeared in tongues of fire. So fire, besides giving off heat, what else does fire give off? Light. Light. The Holy Spirit enlightens us to know the truth about our faith, to know the truth about the sacraments, to know the truth about Jesus and his real presence. So if you're lacking in faith, if you're doubting, if you're not practicing, ask the Holy Spirit to enlighten you, help you to understand and to value the truth about who God is, who Jesus is, and how he's truly present to us. And then you will practice even more. So that's faith. And the second reading today, we hear about St. Paul speaking to the Colossians. He said, you have died with Christ and have risen with him. Seek what is above and not what is below. You have been baptized into Christ. You're dead to the world. You're dead to sin. You're dead to yourself. You are alive in God. So don't seek the things of this world. Don't hope for the things of this world, but hope in God, hope in Christ, hope in heaven. So do we believe in heaven? Yes. yes. Do we hope in heaven? Do we hope in God? Yes. yes. 
So when we do that, our life is changed. We become detached from this world. Things don't seem to matter as much. Illnesses, disappointments, trials, suffering. We see that they're temporary, that they're fleeting, that, they, that our true happiness is in heaven. So that's what St. Paul says. Don't seek the things of this world. Don't seek the things of this earth. Seek what is above. That's where you belong. That's your destiny. That's your goal. Focus on what's above, not on what is below. So that's hope. We don't hope so much for the things of the world because we know they're temporary and passing. They're meant to lead us to God. But sometimes we turn them into ends. Instead of means to God, we turn them into ends themselves. We seek them for, for, for themselves. And St. Paul say, don't do that. And the Holy Spirit, being fire, he purifies us. He purifies us of all the things that do not belong to God, that do not belong to our vocation, our lofty calling. You know how gold is purified? In intense heat. At a very high temperature, gold will melt. And when it melts, the impurities, the, the less valuable metals, will float to the top, and they're skimmed off. And then when the gold is cooled, it hardens, and it becomes more pure, more precious, more valuable. And so likewise, with the Holy Spirit, he'll turn up the heat. He'll purify us that way, so that we can be more holy, more perfect, more precious that we don't value the temporary fleeting things of the world, but we seek what is most important, the things of heaven. So the Holy Spirit will help us to hope in God, hope in heaven, and not in creatures or in the world. And then the lastly, we, we talk about love or charity, and we see this in the readings to, today too. Mary Magdalene, early in the morning on the day of the resurrection, while it was still dark, she, she could be in bed, she could be sleeping in, but what does she do? She goes to the tomb. Because why? Because she loves Jesus. When you love somebody, you want to be with them. You're thinking about them. You can't stand to be separated from them. You want to be near them. And so she probably couldn't sleep. She wants to be where Jesus is. So she takes a chance. It was dangerous for a woman to be alone in the dark in public. That was dangerous. Anything could have happened to her, but she didn't care. She took a risk. She wanted to be with her beloved. Early in the morning, while it was still dark, she left the house and went to the tomb. I woke up at 4.30 this morning, and I felt like going back to bed, and then I thought about the gospel reading, and I said, I felt Jesus saying to me, do you love me? If you do, then get up. <laughs> and so I got up and prayed, right? It's a sign of love, sacrifice to be with the other. That's true love, to give up something, to be with the other person, right? And so it is with us too. How much do you love Jesus? Do you want to sacrifice an hour of your week to be with him? And so that's another thing, love. And the Holy Spirit, that fire, it's the fire of God's love. The Holy Spirit is the love between the Father and the Son. The Father, from all eternity, loves the Son completely, perfectly. He gives himself completely over to the Son. The Son receives his love and gives himself completely back to the Father. Their love is so perfect, so real, so intense, that it is a person, the Holy Spirit. He is the love of God. And he's been poured into our hearts at baptism and more fully at confirmation to help us to know God's love and to love him in return. And so that's how we grow in the theological virtues, in faith, hope, and love. And so we grow to share more fully in the life of God and in his love and ultimately in his resurrection. So that's what the readings point us to. That's what God is leading us to this fullness of life that Jesus came to give us. But he can't force it upon us. He can only invite us, offer us. We have to accept. Like any gift, it could be accepted or refused or rejected. Am I right? 
And so it is the gift of life, the gift of the resurrection, the gift of heaven. It's a gift that it has to be freely received. It has to be desired. It has to be sought after. Or else we can take it for granted and we may lose it forever. So let us not take this gift for granted. God is so generous, so, so, um, so good to us. Let us ask the Holy Spirit, who has been already been given to us, to help us to grow in faith, hope, and charity so that we may sh share more fully in God's resurrection. Amen?